Well, you know of my obsessions, my loves are stencils. You all know that because I started a company. Stencils and doodling and recently watercolor. Um, so I thought of a way to put all of my loves together. So I just made circles and then I just doodled, okay? Easy peasy. I don't even think this involved a stencil because I'm an equal opportunity doodler. Then I also did some little doodles and cut them out to use in journal pages. And that's what I tend to do with these things is use them and save them for journal pages or if I'm binding up a book or something like that. And I just wanted to show you some variations. And then I'll show you what I did today, which I really like and I want to do it again. I made this. So this is using Cynthia Silveri stencil S680. So I used this one and I first traced down the squares and then I doodled and then I watercolored. But I want to back up a bit and show you how to make this super easy. All right, I got a few other stencils here that I thought might be nice. For doodling, I like a smooth paper. I like a smooth surface because if I'm using pens on it and I'm doing things in detail, I want the paper to be pretty smooth. I don't want like a cold pressed watercolor paper. Anyway, so what I do is I buy either Bristol or I buy a hot press watercolor paper. And I usually buy a pad with larger size pieces, maybe 9 by 12 or even larger. And I cut them down. And I have a whole drawer of scraps that I just, scraps from everything. And it, when I need a little scrap, I pull something out. And they can be various sizes. And it's a great way to use my materials. Like, look at this scrap. This would be a um, perfect bookmark, would it not? And you could start this one with watercolor for sure. These are my brand new Ocean, what was it called, Mary? Ocean Paper Watercolors. I'll have to say, I put together this set of colors myself. And I was trying to pick up some colors that I thought I didn't have. And... Then it kind of turned out I did really have a lot of these colors <laughs> because I'm such a freaking, I'm so silly. I thought I knew, but um, Bristol Smooth. I like Bristol Smooth, yeah. And um, these are all, these papers are on my Amazon page, you know, if you're interested. But what I will do is I will start out creating what I think are some fun little watercolor drawings and then I'll go back in and doodle or put a stencil over it or whatever and that's one way to get started if you don't have watercolor brushes a great thing to use is one of these water brushes because then you never have to actually you know, wash out your brush, the water comes right out of the brush. I was discovering that the other day and that was actually pretty fun to do. So what I've started doing is when I get a palette, then they usually come with this and I just tape it on the top so that I can at a glance grab whichever one I want. And then if I'm traveling, I'll put this part inside. I just love this one for doodling. It's really fun. And um, maybe I should try some. Yes, no, yes, no. Oh gosh, crazy girl. 
I will draw one out with this and show you how I do it, and then we'll go in. All right, so here are the microns. This is the set of 10. And I just put this up on my Amazon page today, mainly because it's hard to find the set of 10. But the reason I like the set of 10 is that there's two O1s in it, and I use a lot of O1s, so you have a backup O1. And then you have the really little ones, the 003 and the 005, and then you have, so you've got two O ones, an O2, an O3, O5, O8, and 12. You don't always find the eight and 12 in a set, and that's cool when you want a fatter one. And you have the PN, the plastic nibs. So this set of 10, in my opinion, is the one to go for because you get more bang for your buck. So I'm gonna start my outlines with an O1. And you have, you may take liberties as you're doing the outlines. I'm gonna just do one of them here to show you how we get started. And then I can easily add to this. And the only reason I'm gonna show you one is because you are all going to dive off of the live stream and want to do this because that's how I would be if I were watching this. I would never want to be watching anyone do this. <laughs> I would want to be doing it myself. All right, so there's the first one. And you can pick any stencil. I picked, I found a couple more I want to do later on. Like, I think this would be pretty. This one of, this is a Stegmiller S106. Would that not be pretty? You could just go to town on this stencil with some beautiful watercolors, it would be stunning. You could doodle this, then watercolor, and then do some stitching through it here and there. It would be really pretty. But anyway, that one would be cool. And then this other one I wanna work on is this Tracy Bautista S246 is really nice. The other thing, I'm sorry, I'm going off on different ideas, but the other thing I wanted to mention is if, um, if you go to our webpage, stencilgirlproducts.com, there's a section with doodle tutorials, and there's some really old ones. We have been doing this for six, seven years, seriously. We're just a little doodle obsessed here. All right, now, I'm gonna hold this one up to the camera, if I can get it centered, because I wanted you to see how I doodled this first, and then I painted it. Some of the watercolor paints have a little bit more opacity than others. And so when you paint them, like, like right here, some of these dots, the opacity painted over the dot or some of the doodle. You know what, I don't mind that but some people might mind that, so you may wanna, I don't know if you're gonna wanna doodle first or you're gonna wanna watercolor first. I think it's just largely an issue of preference, okay? So I'm just pointing that out. The other thing is, is when I traced this, see how the bridges are still there? So you can make choices and you can fill those in, like I did on some of these. Well, this is, is this the same one? Yeah. I filled it in as if there was no bridge, right? So you can just try and just, you can redoodle over it. There's so many different Huge. ways. And to cut up these little squares, these are gonna be divine in art journals. I mean, they're just fun. They're fun, fun, fun. And what I like to do is I clip it to board, and then when I'm watching TV, I, um, I just do the doodling. I do the watercolor, obviously, at the table. I have not gotten so crazy that I'm watercoloring in the living room while I'm watching TV, almost. But is, <laughs> I'm just sticking with the O1 right now, and I'm gonna just doodle some little scribble marks on here because I kinda like that. That pleases me. The fun thing about doodling is it's doodling. It is literally play. And I like the fact that you can do it while you're doing something else. You can do it while you're sitting 
in a group or hanging out with people. So I hope you guys have a chance to maybe play with some of your stencils and markers. And oh, look how this is drying down. This is really gonna be pretty.